And there were two doctors in, in Wuhan that noticed this, I think, at two different hospitals. One later died of the disease. I remember reading a little bit about that at the time. What did we learn from them? Because I think also the Communist Party was a bit slow to maybe censor some of the information coming out of those two gentlemen. Yeah, that's right. In in January 2020, there's quite a lot of chat on, so, on Chinese social media from within the hospitals about what doctors are seeing, what they're finding. And in particular, uh, this um, ophthalmologist, uh, Dr. Wen Liang, I think I've got his name right, um, he uh, uh, warns his friends and colleagues, there's a new viral pneumonia in the in the, in our hospital we're not supposed to talk about it but watch it you know take precautions now within i mean by the middle of february he's dead of covid poor chap and he's young you know he's in his 30s 33 right yeah. yeah um so that's kind of surprising but the point is at the end of of january he is subjected to a vicious dressing down by the party for having put this stuff on social media to, to, on an internal chat to his to his colleagues, you know, not not he's not posted it on Twitter or something, you know, he's 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 circulated to his friends. Watch it. There's a there's a virus on the loose in the hospital, um, uh, and the th you know the document he had to sign saying you know I was wrong to do this was was brutal. You know, I mean it's nasty stuff as it were, uh, and he's not the only one. I mean there are people being uh, basically arrested for having said things about this virus at that time. And there's very clearly that the regime is trying to keep a lid on the information in January um, uh, because they're pretending that it's under control. And they're claiming right up to the middle of January, we got this sorted, it was a little outbreak, no problem, it's over. There's been no, no new cases for 10 days. They said that at one point, that just wasn't true. Um, there's no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. They said that right up until the middle of January, and the World Health Organization echoed them on that. And by then, even the Taiwanese knew that wasn't true. You know, I mean, uh, there, were, there, were, there was information coming out saying not healthcare workers are getting infected who are handling patients and things like that. So, of course, there's human-to-human -human transmission. You know, not every case has gone to the market and bought a a bamboo rat for dinner. You know, this isn't what's happening. People are getting it from people. And the Chinese New Year mega banquet uh, in Wuhan with, I can't remember how many, 100,000 people attending it, goes ahead at the end of January. And everyone goes back home all across the country. And everyone travels all over the world for that holiday. Right. And, you know, so a chance is missed to nip this in the bud because of the way the regime reacted. Could something have been done? Yes, I think if on the 31st of December, which is essentially the date that the, authority, the, the, the medical authorities in Wuhan wake up to the fact that something's happening, if on that date they had said, let's share all the information we can, not only inside China but in, with the world, let's find all the cases, let's take immense precautions to isolate them, I think the whole thing could have been over in a couple of weeks. It's very infectious, so possibly not, but... Uh, I, you know, there is undoubtedly a possibility that that's true. Could have been contained. It could have been contained. As opposed to super spread. I mean, the Chinese right. New Year's was the super spreading event. I mean, probably that's yeah. the, the most spreading event of any holiday of the year is yeah. that one. Now, it's possible, and, you know, we keep getting reports from Italy that there's evidence of, of the virus in uh, or antibodies to the virus in sewage in Italy from before December, you know, from November or December. So it's, and there were a lot of connections between Wuhan and Northern Italy yeah. uh, through the textile industry. Um, it's possible that it was already out of China before they even detected it in China. But the reason I don't myself think that we can be sure about that is because picking up an antibody to SARS-CoV-2 in sewage in Northern Italy may not tell you as much as you think, because there are four other coronaviruses that infect people all the time and cause versions of the common cold, and you get cross-reactivity of antibodies. So you might just be picking up the background radiation, as it were, of, of okay. coronavirus immune re reactions in human beings. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, 
It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator, by far, was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.